Hello, welcome to the Brintech School Curriculum for Wales presentation, where we're going to share with you our journey towards Curriculum for Wales so far. I'm Ryan Davis and I'm head teacher. And I'm Laura Mackey, deputy head teacher. We want to start um, way back in uh, in successful futures times where the then education secretary came out with a number of quotations. But uh, the second one that you see on the screen here now is one that we've used a lot with our staff, our governors, and indeed our pupils, uh, because we think this is really, really relevant to our situation. Um, and Hulu has said this is not some kind of tinkering exercise with the old national curriculum. This marks the doing away with the national curriculum of 1988 and the rewriting from the ground floor up of an entirely new curriculum with a different philosophy behind it. And what we're hoping to show you tonight is our new curriculum model, and it is just that. We have ripped up everything because we actually believe in Brintake School that our Key Stage 3 curriculum now does not work for our pupils. So, in terms of the context of the school, we're a large school based in the Bridgend Town Centre. We've got 1,580 pupils, with approximately 16% of our pupils who are eligible for free school meals. We have 312 pupils in our sixth form, and the school was formed um, as a result of a merger of two separate schools 50 years ago on the same school site. And the upper and lower school, um, they're uh, separated by a kilometre long path, which our pupils travel along five times a day, as they keep telling me, and that is relevant later on. And I have been here as five years as head teacher and Lauren joined us three years ago as deputy head teacher. So now we look at some of the Brintag issues. OK, so one of the first issues that we recognise as a school um, is that we know we have a key stage three slump and we know that we have pupils at key stage three who are treading water. We see the fantastic work that they complete in primary schools and how challenged they are and how engaged they are. And then they come to secondary school and almost their progress seems to halt. And we want to provide a curriculum where the pupils are progressing all of the time. We're quite proud of our results at Key Stages 4 and 5, um, but we're often saying, well, what if we could get Key Stage 3 right? Um, uh, because it, often the results of Key Stages 4 and 5 are despite the performance of Key Stage 3. Um, and, and imagine if we could get a, a new curriculum model, what our results could be like. One of the other issues that we've identified is the lack of parent carer involvement in secondary school. Uh, we know that our primary colleagues do a brilliant, brilliant job of engaging parents in the learning journey. We need to learn from our primary colleagues and ensure that our parents are involved in the learning of the pupils. Another of our issues at Brintake is that maths learning stays in the maths classroom, science learning stays in the science lab. There's a lack of learning portability and we want to create a curriculum model that enables our pupils to draw on the skills, knowledge and experience from all areas of learning experience and be able to apply those in different contexts. We also know that productive learning time in a day is restricted with our current timetable structure. Pupils have five hours um, where they have to walk from one lesson, one kilometre up to the other side of the school by the time they get there and settle down. We know that that really, really limits the amount of learning that the pupils do in that hour. And also staff have very few opportunities in our school to work together and we want to break down that barrier as well. <laughs> And probably most importantly, we know that we have most years 35% of our pupils who do not meet that gold standard 5A star to C grades. And what are we doing for those pupils? We have to make sure that our curriculum is inclusive of all and allows all of our pupils to progress. Right from the very start of the process, we realised that uh, um, we committed to ensuring that pupils co-construct this model with us. The pupil voice is really, really important. We've asked our pupils lots of questions and they've given us lots of information and they've been the key people in terms of steering our vision. Um, one of the questions, for example, we asked them is what do you enjoy most in lessons? And they came up with things such as practical lessons. They like seeing an end product. They like something um, to be able to see, touch, feel something at the end of the learning process, uh, which has significantly affected the way that we think about our uh, curriculum vision and so we've taken all of this information and put it together in our vision for our curriculum model. OK, so this work, um, we, we decided to trial different things back in 2020, 2021, where we wanted to trial a thematic curriculum. So you can see the curriculum there. We chose three separate themes for the three terms and we looked for opportunities where um, clusters could work together. There could be links between clusters. 
Following that, we conducted some research. We decided, we looked at the model, certain things worked, certain things didn't. We looked at Mary Myatt, Tom Sherrington. We looked at a personal favorite of mine, Ken Robinson. And we looked at what they were saying about curriculum design. And we decided to come up with a new model um, where we would again be using a thematic approach, focusing on themes, but having a text hook as well. And a lot of that came out of the research we did with Mary Myatt, but it also came from working with our primary colleagues. And when we asked the question of, them um, you know which theme has been the best one you've ever done they all talk about it having a textual hook we knew that we had to introduce that into our curriculum so we had three separate themes and we looked for opportunities for clusters to work together on top of that we had two whole school cluster challenge weeks where the timetable is completely suspended and pupils in each year group are allocated to a particular area of learning and exciting opportunities project-based learning etc is planned and for those pupils during those two weeks. However brilliant that model is, there are serious barriers to it. Um, for example, in the Cluster Challenge Weeks, there are huge efforts from staff and pupils all squeezed into one week. And, you know, staff and pupils are on their knees by the end of the week. They've all enjoyed themselves, but they they, they, they can't see how they can continue with that on a longer term basis. And, and really importantly, there's no real continuity in learning and progression. Pupils then go back to normal lessons and they don't see how the two things link. It's also really difficult because because it's all in one week. It's difficult for staff to book visitors and buses for trips, and they found that that really limited what they could do as a result. And we also know that it impacted in terms of the rest of the school. Our key stage four, our key stage five classes almost got a little bit neglected during those weeks because the focus was very much on um, the cluster challenge, the pupils in key stage three, and how they can progress in that week. And of course, uh, because the pupils were going back to the normal timetable uh, in between these cluster challenge weeks, there's limited opportunities there for project based learning opportunities. And, and it's the project based learning opportunities that people said they really, really enjoyed during our cluster challenge week. And so we need to look at a model which would allow them more access to project based learning opportunities. Um, and also within this model as well, there's limited opportunities again for collaboration within and across clusters. And so taking all of that information, um, look, uh, the information from our pupils, Pupils, our parents and carers, and then looking at the barriers to the model, we've come up with our chosen model. And our chosen model is quite radically different. So this is what our year seven pupils will experience when they come into our school, when they join us in September. And their timetables will look quite different to the timetables that we have today. Um, for example, on Monday, week A, they'll have a new humanities day where the whole of the humanities team will be working with our pupils on what we are calling expeditions. On a Wednesday, they'll have language Languages, Literacy Communication Day and Expressive Arts Day and so on as we work through all of the areas of learning experience. In between, on the Tuesdays and Thursdays, our pupils will experience workshops in science and technology, languages and so on to uh, uh, develop the skills that they need for these expeditions that they're doing on the expedition days. OK, so what will the curriculum look like? You've seen the structure. We are going to continue with three broad themes. However, we have very much changed them up and we've worked with our pupils in primary schools in order to come up with new themes. And there'll be a series of expedition challenges for the pupils to work towards within each theme as well. What we think is really important is to ensure that within these ex expeditions, within these themes, that we interweave literacy, numeracy, digital competence and the wider skills as well, the creativity skills, but also PSC and SRE and so on. And so it's quite a big challenge, but it's happening in Bintake School at the moment. We also know for a curriculum like this to work, we need to have excellent staff driving it. So we've decided to appoint um, what we are calling expedition leaders, one per cluster and one for our Devaldor provision as well. And these people have been appointed. They have a TLR and also have some time in order to develop the resources. And one of the last things we've decided to do as well with this model is to introduce iPads for each year seven pupil. So they'll have a one to one device and the pupils will be able to document their learning using an, using Seesaw as their e-portfolio as they go through. We've appointed expedition leaders. You can see our expedition leaders who are leading the development of these expedition challenges and they're doing some quite phenomenal work and you can see them on the screen there. Um, they are leading the expedition days and they're working also very, very closely, as Lauren has said, uh, with the learning coordinators to ensure that the workshops in between the expedition days feed in and develop the skills that are needed um, to be successful on, in those expeditions.
OK, so what might an expedition day look like? You can see here an example of um, a humanities expedition day. So just to give a little bit of context, as part of the what is freedom big question, pupils will be studying Article 14 of the UNCRC, which explores the right that children can be free to be of any or no religion. So in the workshops that Ryan talked about earlier on, pupils will explore in different religions, focusing then on Islam and linking it to the hook text, I am Malala, and then on this particular expedition day, pupils will attend a launch assembly where the expedition leader will outline the plans for the day to them and begin to introduce the pupils to different mosques around the world. Then between 10 and 12 o'clock, the pupils will attend a will will go off and visit Abba Kenfig Mosque um, on rotation and they'll talk to Muslims about their beliefs and practices. They'll be able to take some photographs and document their learning throughout using their iPads. Then between 12 and 1.25, the pupils will return to school and they'll choose from a menu of creative tasks which will help them to express how they've learned throughout that particular visit so they may build their own mosque design their own prayer mat they may present what they've learned from their visit on the school radio station they may learn to write their name using calligraphy and so on so lots of different and um, creative opportunities for them there and then the last hour of the day is really, really important. They'll complete any of the creative tasks from earlier on, but they'll also have some reflection time, which we believe is so important in this model. The pupils will complete their daily writing journal and where they will document all the learning that they've done and they will upload work onto their e-portfolio so that they can share their learning with their parents and carers and they can assess any progress that they've made throughout the day. As you said earlier on, involvement of stakeholders is really, really important and um, they have to know about this radically different model. And um, so we've had lots of meetings with our Custer primary head teachers and the AOLE leads um, where they focus on planning preparation. We've had open meetings with parents and carers to make them aware of what is happening. We've met with our governing body um, and really important, probably the most important thing here is we've had curriculum pupil focus groups with year six pupils from our Custer primary schools who've actually often tipped our ideas on their head. Uh, we've gone in with an idea and they said that won't work we needed to look like this which is absolutely fantastic and also we we provide all of our staff in school with regular updates so they feel part of the process so where are we now? Well, our expedition leaders, learning coordinators, cluster leaders have all been working together really, really regularly and they've decided on three broad themes for the curriculum. You can see them there. We've got Express Yourself for Term 1, Brave New Worlds for Term 2 and Footprints for Term 3. And in, in terms of where we go in next, we've produced uh, curriculum overviews uh, by each a a AOLE and cluster so that we can pull everything together in one big um, um, strategic document. We've also conducted lots of research around text hooks, like I talked about earlier on, um, and we've decided on engaging and appropriately challenging text for the pupils. Our expedition leaders, learning coordinators and cluster leaders, they meet regularly and really importantly to emphasise here, we want something creative, we want something big out of them, so we're giving them quality time and lots of it as well. Um, and they're constructing the big questions for the pupils with, and, uh, within the three different themes. And as we said earlier, we've been working collaboratively with our primary cluster AOLE leads and they've been meeting regularly with a clear focus on progression and challenge. So this is an example of our collaborative planning document where all the all the cluster leads, as you can see, all the expedition leaders have been inputting their big questions that they've decided on for term one under the theme Express Yourself. And um, they've also then come up with sub questions um, that they will carry out throughout that particular term. What they're starting to do now is they're starting to look at any authentic links that are coming out between clusters so they can collaborate between clusters as well as within clusters. So it's a really, really exciting part of the development phase that we're in at the very at this moment in time. Well, thank you for listening to our presentation. Hopefully we've given you a little taste of um, the very exciting journey that we're on. We're absolutely committed to Curriculum for Wales because we think it is the best thing that we can offer our pupils and that's all that matters to us. If you would like to find out any more information about our curriculum model, then please do not hesitate to contact Lauren or myself at Brintake School and we'd be more than happy uh, to work with you. But thank you for listening and thank you for your time today. Thank you very much.